Hi, I'm JJ, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to set up and get the most out of your MagBeam. The MagBeam is a revolutionary Fresnel lens modifier for speed lights that focuses the light from your flash for brighter flash output at greater distances. But that's not all. It's also a pattern projecting thing of wonder that creates crazy cool patterns using mag masks. Here's what's in the MagBeam kit. One MagBeam, one wide angle lens, one telephoto lens, four mag masks, and one mag mod pouch. And here's what comes in the wildlife version. One mag beam, one telephoto lens, one mag mod pouch, and one mag grip. Now there's a right way and a wrong way to install these lenses. The mag beam uses either a telephoto lens or a wide angle lens. You can tell them apart with this nifty half circle notch we cut out of the wide lens. These lenses are awesome, and they have an important feature in common. They have these really fun grooves that feel weird when you rub your fingers on them. The telephoto lens is used to focus light into a tight, more intense pattern. The wide angle lens is used to project the designs on each mag mask. In order for either of the lenses to work properly, you need to install the lenses with the grooves facing towards your flash. This is very important. You can use the telephoto lens in just about any configuration. Fully collapsed, semi-collapsed, and fully extended which is where the telephoto lens really shines. If you want the cleanest light output while using the telephoto lens for a spotlight effect, set your flash head zoom as wide as you can, like 24 millimeters or wider. The wider the zoom on your flash, the cleaner the light will look from edge to edge. If you want the highest flash output possible with a telephoto lens, which is what most wildlife and bird photographers need, then set your flash head zoom to 70 millimeters or greater. Between 70 millimeters and 200 millimeters, the output is essentially the same. The wide angle lens, on the other hand, will only be effective when the mag beam is fully collapsed. There's some incredible mathematical precision at work here, and if you try to use the wide lens with the mag beam extended, math is gonna kick your butt. So once you've got the wide lens installed and fully collapsed your mag beam, you can add a mag mask. Mag masks are made out of thin sheets of stainless steel and they're used to create different patterns of light. Because they're thin, be careful while handling them as they could be sharp. We haven't cut ourselves yet, but it's probably a good idea to keep them out of reach of small children. But JJ, how do you install a mag mask? I'm glad you asked, Trevor. Installing a mag mask is super simple. In fact, you've basically already done it if you've used any of our mag gels. The mag masks share the same geometric shape and fit into the integrated gel slot at the base of the mag beam. The mag masks will only work with the mag beam and only with the mag beam's integrated gel slot. Trying to use the mag masks in any other way will leave you scratching your head in confusion. That's great, JJ but how do I collapse and extend the mag beam? I'm glad you asked, Trevor. Extending the mag beam is easy. Simply hold the base of the mag beam in one hand and the top of the mag beam in the other hand. Then, while gripping firmly, separate your hands using a quick motion, like this. To collapse the mag beam, simply grab onto the top sides of the mag beam and pull the next section towards it, like this. Repeat this step for the final section until fully collapsed. It might take a few tries to get the hang of it, and for all of you wildlife photographers, here are a few tips to make sure the mag beam performs at its best. Depending on your wildlife photography flash setup, you'll need to calibrate the angle of the mag beam for proper illumination in the center of your frame. Each flash or lens might require a different amount of tilt for proper calibration. To start, install the mag grip on your flash and angle it backwards by pushing the top side of the mag grip towards the back of the flash. Make sure it's even from side to side. With your flash mounted to your camera, Take a photo using a wide angle lens to capture the entire flash exposure. It might work best using a tripod in a darker environment and taking a photo of a flat surface, like a wall. If you can't locate a dark environment, just make sure your flash exposure is much brighter than your camera exposure so you can see the mag beam's pattern easily. If not, you'll want to adjust the mag grip's angle to properly center the flash exposure. If the flash is appearing too low in your photo, angle the mag grip backwards to raise the beam of your flash. If the flash is appearing too high in your photo, adjust the angle forwards to lower the beam of your flash. If the mag beam's concentrated flash is in the dead center of your photo, then you're ready to shoot. Oh, and by the way, the mag beam's Fresnel lenses can act like a magnifying glass, which means they could be used to focus light and burn things if used improperly. While it's pretty unlikely you could accidentally damage your flash or other camera gear with the lenses, we suggest you avoid pointing the mag beam towards the sun while shooting. We also recommend you store the mag beam and its lenses in the provided mag mod pouch when not in use. 
With the MagBeam, you'll be able to work more efficiently while sending more light over longer distances and project light in ways you never have before. Fast, easy, awesome. That's MagMod.